Good morning. Wonderful Wednesday morning it is. And uh, welcome to Waves of Hope Chapel with the Canaveral Port Ministry. My name is Mike Hoffman, and it's good to be with you this morning. And uh, we're going to kick off to a little bit different for, for here on my end uh, today. We'll, we'll start with a song that relates to the passage, the scripture that we'll be looking at today from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5 verses 17 through 41 to the end of the chapter. But I've got my wife, Barbara, here today who will uh, join in and uh, lead us in this song today. It's called When We Walk with the Lord, and it's about trusting and obeying. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Barb, for doing that. And, and we'll close our time maybe coming back to that song as well. You were probably wondering, what was she doing with her hands? Well, uh, Barbara used to um, interpret for the hearing impaired for the deaf, and uh, I used to be a teacher to the deaf, and that sign, trust, that's the sign for trust. So if you ever want to think about holding on, trusting, trust in the Lord, uh, that's a great so sign. And then the word obey, the sign, the deaf sign for that is this, obey. We obey. So we trust and obey. Uh, and that's a great picture for us and good, good motion of the hands that really describe what that means, that trusting and then obeying, giving our all to him. So great picture that is for us today. And so that is our key word for today that uh, I want to leave you. Uh, Richard has uh, been building and, and the other uh, chaplains have been building on the chapel times uh, that, that foundation on the bricks and they've been putting words on there like encouragement and compassion and uh, honesty, things like that. And, and the word we're going with today that will be a foundational word is obey. And you know what? I should have written it backwards so you can get that. But you got it. O-B-E-Y. Obey or O-B-E-Y if you want to go with the other way. Obey is the key word for today. And... Um, the key takeaway for debt today, as we talk about Acts chapter 5, verse 17 through 41, is obeying Jesus brings joy. So obeying Jesus, following Jesus in your life and my life brings joy to us. And that's a great idea, a great takeaway for us to hang on to today. But just to recap very quickly from yesterday, um, you heard from Richard and in chapter 5, earlier in chapter 5 and verse 12 and other scriptures there, um, Peter and the apostles were doing amazing miracles, uh, wonderful healings, and, and uh, as a result of that, many people were restored by, in health and body and spirit. You know, when our bodies get touched and and healed, um, uh, it does something to us. And I know when I spoke last week, um, talking about Peter and John at the temple, they went walking and leaping. The, the lame man was healed and he jumped up with joy and he hung on to Peter and John and, and, and just was praising God. It, it changed everything in, in his life. And, um, and I'm thankful that God still is in the business of healing today as well. He touches people in all kinds of ways, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, God is in that healing business. So, so yesterday, Richard spoke about that. And as a result of all of that, the healings, 
it said that uh, people from outside of Jerusalem, from the town, started coming and bringing uh, those who had all kinds of ailments and illnesses and um, uh, possessed by evil spirits, those things. They came and, and uh, just, just came in as crowds uh, together. And I could just picture these apostles, 12 of these apostles out there speaking in groups to these crowds and touching people, seeing them changed and healed and, and redeemed uh, spiritually with new life. And that's what happened in that first part of Acts chapter 5. Crowds came, uh, they flooded Jerusalem, and, um, and then Richard said the word for yesterday was compassion. There was compassion among the apostles as they touched their, them. And then what happened as a result of those good things that happened, uh, as we talked about yesterday, we see today the result of that, uh, the reaction to God's good things. And in verse 20, it says that the religious leaders felt threatened because the people were following Jesus. The religious leaders, uh, they felt threatened, so they, they tried to stop the apostles. Well, how did they do that? Well, they arrested the apostles. They arrested them all. They said, take them to jail and, and we're going to try them. And uh, then the angel of the Lord appeared and, and intervened that night and they were free. And, and, and uh, the, they also, the, the leaders made verbal threats and they plotted to kill the apostles. And they whipped or, or flogged, they whipped all of the apostles. And then they ordered them with their religious authority they said and decreed to them, never speak in the name of Jesus again. That's what they were doing. So um, here we find the dilemma. Here we find, uh, uh, can you imagine that picture yourself standing in front of this crowd of religious authorities or leaders who you would be thinking, wow, they're so much more holy than I. They're, they're, they're higher up than me. And, and here they're surrounding the apostles. Um, what should these apostles do? Should they follow the orders of their religious leaders or obey God? And I know you know the answer to this. Um, but I want to ask you this. What if you and I, as followers of Jesus, if you're a follower of Jesus today, I hope you are. If you're not, I hope today you will say, this is the day I decide. I am giving my life to Jesus. I am yielding. I am turning from where I was and I'm following Jesus today. I hope that's what you will do today. But here, what should they do as apostles? Follow the, obey the religious leaders or God? Well, God is certainly the higher authority, the highest authority. And what if you and I were faced with that same threat, those same kinds of threat or pressure? Maybe there's been times in your life when you have had that sense of pressure. Maybe it was peer pressure, even as an adult, uh, in your work place, uh, maybe on the ship, that you had that pressure of those around you to follow what they're doing, um, think like they think, um, uh, and not follow Jesus. Maybe you have that pressure. I know we all do when we're around others to conform to what they're doing or what they're saying or thinking. And um, and even on the TV, what do we do to, uh, are we conforming with what we see on, in movies and TV and, and thinking and thought? So we have those pressures, um, and to follow Jesus or follow others. So think about those times. What did you do? And what are you doing? Sometimes we really fail Jesus in that. I fail Jesus in that when I, when I, choose to uh, conform to something else other than following my Lord. And um, we have that. But 
Jesus, uh, we have that choice to follow Jesus or because of fret, pressure, follow our friends or boss. Well, we can learn from Peter. And uh, as he told the leaders, we must obey God rather than men. And Peter says that in verse 29, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. And, um, and then he talked about who God is and, and uh, he spoke to these leaders with boldness and uh, he followed, he made that decision to follow Jesus. Um, listen, following Jesus isn't always easy. It isn't always convenient, but it is absolutely um, the joy that we have as followers of Christ. It isn't always easy. It isn't always convenient, but it is always profitable. You will profit. You will be blessed in your following Jesus. And uh, I love that. Even though the apostles were whipped uh, for that decision, it says, it says later on, as they left the leaders, let them go. Um, the leaders let them go. Even though they wanted to plan to kill the apostles, one of the leaders said, don't do anything because uh, if this is what, if this is their own doing, if this is only them doing it, then it will fail. But if you're, if this is God working through these men whom you want to kill, watch out, watch out. And so it says the apostles left the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. They, they left with their, their backs ripped open with welts and their backs bleeding from the whippings, rejoicing. That's how they left because they had been counted worthy to suffer, to suffer disgrace and for the sake of the name for Jesus. I hope that, um, I hope that we will have that sense of following Jesus as, um, as we go along and uh, we, we trust him and obey him. Uh, I, I work with a group that their, their simple motto is this, is um, listen to Jesus and obey. Listen to Jesus and obey. And then teach others to do the same. So we're all on this road together of learning to trust him and obey him. And as you read those verses, I want to encourage you to go back and read those verses. Verses 17 through the end of chapter 5, verse 41. And I would ask these questions. These are great questions on the ship. Just three simple questions. What do you learn about God from these verses? What do you learn about God from these verses? That's the first question. I would, I'd answer this. God keeps us. One of the examples of an answer is God keeps us to follow him and give the message of life to others. That's what the angel said when they released the apostles from prison go to the temple and share this message of life. Second question, so first question is, what do you learn about God from these verses? Second question is, what do you learn about people from these verses? And then the third question is, is there something you need to do after hearing or reading this story? Is there something you need to do in your life after reading this and hearing this story? An example, Lord, what area of my life do I need, do I need to trust you with? What area of my life do I need to trust you with? Is it my thoughts? Is it my heart? Is there, am I bitter? Am I angry about something? Um, am I at odds? 
Uh, am I not following you? What area of my life do I need to trust you? Where am I not following you, Lord, in obedience? Those are things to be thinking about as you go. And we're closing now, and we're, I'm thankful for uh, our time together this morning. And I'm going to ask, uh, and our key word, remember, is remember, obey, or you can do it that way, obey, obey. <laughs> And the key thought takeaway today is trusting and obeying Jesus, following him, brings joy. Great. So sing with me, if you will. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Thanks, Barb. And the last scripture verse, which will be my prayer for you today, comes from the Apostle Paul, who obeyed and suffered. And by the way, all the apostles suffered even to the point of death. But this is what he wrote to the Christians in Rome. He said this in Romans chapter 15. Uh, verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.